This is the Bodongo Trail Chimpanzee Exhibit at Edinburgh Zoo and I'm here with Katie Slocum who's an expert in chimpanzee communication so she's a perfect person to ask about how we go about studying primate calls. So hanging out here with the chimpanzees, uh, we're obviously hearing quite a few different types of calls. Now those calls obviously mean something to the chimpanzees. So what's the first step in, in finding out what those calls might mean? Okay, so the first thing you need to do um, is to get your recordings. Um, so actually uh, take the physical recordings of the, of the calls so we can look in detail about the, the sound structure that each of those calls has. And then it's what we're trying to do is match that up, so see if the calls are different depending on the context that's happening. So basically we record everything here, we take our detailed notes um, about what was happening when that call was given, and then we actually go back to the research um, office with those, sit down at a computer, and we'd actually do what's called acoustic analysis on those calls. So that involves um, making um, kind of a visualised of the sound um, and then actually measuring very precisely different aspects of the sound so for instance how long each sound lasts for um, the pitch of it so is it a high-pitched kind of ee or a ooh, low pitched sound so the pitch of it how whether that pitch varies um, over time so is it a very flat sound or is it kind of wavy um, so all of these things so we measure lots of different things in the calls and then we say okay now based on those measurements are the calls different and when we've done that then we can start to say we think that these calls actually mean or refer to different things in the chimps environment so that's the very first stage to really get into grips to what the chimp calls might mean okay what's the basic equipment we need to do a study like this okay so the basic equipment uh, that you need for the study um, is um, a recorder um, that takes nice uncompressed sound file recordings um, and then a microphone. Now um, it depends on how close you are to your animals as to what kind of microphone you, you need. So on this recorder you can see um, it's got a little inbuilt microphone and that's great if you're very close to the animals but here in such a massive enclosure that we've got the chimps in they could be really quite a long way away. So for this we need a much more directional microphone um, like this one here um, and this one so then you really point the microphone at it and it can pick up sounds really quite a long way away very accurately um, so that's the basic equipment that and a clipboard and some data sheets to then record all of the the behavior and who gave it and who else was there and you know what they were eating all of those details you then put down on paper so assuming we've read the manual we know exactly how all this stuff works how do we go about actually making a recording in the field or in the zoo okay so there are some there are some golden rules for how to make good recordings um, the first is being aware that any noise that you make um, that will ruin your chances of measuring accurately the noises that the chimps are making so you have to make sure that you are as quiet as possible and again with a microphone like this any movement of your hand on it will, will make a <laughs> noise and ruin it again be careful what you're doing with your feet especially if you're standing on crunchy leaves or anything like that so you must stand very still and again try and get a position where you don't have a lot of noise behind you so when you point the microphone like that um, if you've got a lot of noise kind of here that will also pick up and then that will make it much harder to get a clear measurement of your sound so basically just keep background noise to an absolute minimum okay and apart from the recordings themselves what else do we need to, to, to make a note of in the field okay so the most important thing is who gave that call uh, because we know that animals um, just like humans um, they're different sizes and it, they have different voices so just like you and you can recognize your friends on the telephone just from their voice the same is true for animals so um, if we don't know who gave the different calls um, we are adding a lot of noise into our data so we have to know who gave them so that's the first thing so first of all before you even start with the sound recording you need to be able to identify your animals 
um, and particularly then if things are moving fast uh, you know you can still accurately know who it is that's actually giving the call so once you know who's giving it you also need to know what they're doing um, so in terms of are they feeding are they resting are they traveling and then also who else is around them so who else um, are, could potentially uh, listening to the calls because we know certainly in chimps that makes a difference for the kind of noises that they make um, so generally who gave it um, what they're doing what the general context is and who else is there and if you can what they're doing as well so quite a lot to be writing down at the same time okay so we've got our sound files yeah. uh, we've recorded the behavior and we've got back to our classroom or our lab wherever we're working what do we do next Okay, so the first thing you need to do um, is get your sound files onto the computer um, and then in some kind of um, acoustic analysis software program, so there are lots of these that you can get for free, so for instance I use a slightly funny sounding one called Prat, um, and then essentially you ask that software to make a visualisation of your sound um, so that you can actually see what it looks like. Um, and from there you then go on to take very detailed measurements um, of the calls. So what are the key things that you can measure using these graphs? Um, okay, so once you've got your visualisation there, um, some of the things that you that are quite simple to measure are things like duration. So for instance in the chimps we know that the calls that they give to high preference food are much longer than the calls that they give to low preference food which are much shorter. Um, so that's very easy to measure in one of these programmes. And it's also quite easy to get some kind of idea as to how high pitched or low pitched the sound is. And again something that's really important. So with the food calls again the high preference ones are really high pitched, the low preference ones are really low pitched. So two really key things that you can measure quite easily in those programs. Okay, so this is Prat, um, the free acoustic software um, program I talked about. Um, so here you can see um, we've got a visualisation um, of a chimpanzee pant hoot. Um, so the top bit here shows you um, amplitude or the loudness of the sound um, against time. So you can see here that the sound starts really softly and then oh there's a bit of a louder bit here and then this is the really really loud bit and then it goes quiet again. So that's what the top two things tell you. Um, and then this is a different type of visualisation and here we actually have frequency up the side, time again along the bottom, and then the darkness of the image, so in, in other words how black it is, then tells you um, how loud that sound is. So the way to interpret this is that we've got, um, so we've got energy here at quite low levels, so quite low frequencies, um, and then again this really loud bit that we know is loud from here again shows that it's blackest here, we can see then it's really quite high frequency here, and we've got two distinct kind of ah! calls there. So if I play it, hopefully you'll be able to follow that through. So again, look for the first bits being quite quiet and short, um, and then building up into this much louder, much higher pitched screamy bit. Okay, so you hopefully you heard that. And then this last bit here that's loud, that's actually him hitting a tree and drumming um, as part of his pant hoot display. Okay, so what you can see here um, is the call that Louis, one of the chimps here at Edinburgh, has given when he's been eating bread. So this is his highly preferred food. Um, and so the calls that he gives to this type of food are really nicely high pitched um, and they've got some really nice tonal structure. So on the um, spectrogram, which is this bottom bit here, you can see um, that you can see different bands of frequency here. Um, and that means it's got a, a really nice tonal um, quality to it. So again, here you can see on this call, again, these really nice bands um, of acoustic energy. So if we listen to this, you can hear it's really quite high pitched and it's, it's quite a nice sound to listen to. Um, you can also see that the duration of the calls, so if we just look at the duration like that, um, the durations are quite quite long for this type of call. So if we then compare that to um, the same chimp, so Louis again, then giving uh, a call to apples which he doesn't like, we should be able to see some differences. 
Okay, so what we've got here now um, is Louis calls to apples, which he doesn't particularly like. And the first thing you'll notice about these spectrograms in comparison to the ones he gave to bread um, are that we've lost that nice tonal structure. So we can no longer see the nice clear um, bands of energy at different frequencies lying on top of each other. So this is all much more noisy. There's no real clear structure here. And that's reflected in how it sounds. So listen for this being much noisier and also much lower pitch. So we've got much more energy towards the bottom here. Oh, so that's the chimps here telling me what they think of uh, me talking about their sounds. <laughs> oh, there we go. So that's the chimpanzee pant hooting and then some females wah barking to tell the male to stop it. <laughs> Right, anyway, back to Pratt. Um, so um, if we just play this sound, so you're looking, listening for low pitch and a much more noisy sound. So I hope you can hear that. Um, okay, so to start to make measurements on the calls, the first thing we need to do is really to kind of zoom in on the call so it's nice and clear on your screen. So um, have a nice zoom in, that's a little bit too much. Um, so it's nice and clear. Um, and then what we can, so first of all, to measure the duration, we can just put our cursor at the beginning, drag it across to the end of the call, and then just read off here that that's 0.07 of a second long, the duration of that particular call. And then to get an idea of the frequency of the call, or how high or low pitch it is, we go to pitch, click on show pitch, and then this blue line appears. Um, and then again, with the whole call highlighted, we can then just ask Pratt, tell us what the, the mean pitch over the whole call is. And we just say, get pitch, like that. And then it comes out with the answer there. Um, so then you've got two really nice basic measurements, um, which help you try and characterize that sound. So, so that's the basics of a simple study on primate cores. Where can this lead to? What have you done with this kind of study? Okay, well actually here at Edinburgh Zoo, um, I looked at specifically at the food calls that the chimps make here. The first stage of that was actually getting the recordings of the calls, um, noting down what food they were eating, and we found that actually the calls they gave to the high preference food uh, were these ah, ah, grunts, and the ones to the low preference food were these much noisier, lower pitched ah, ah, grunts. Um, so that was fantastic. So it looked like they were um, communicating about the value of the food to each other. Um, but what we always have to make sure is that the listening chimps can actually understand that information. So how we tested that was doing what was called a playback experiment. So when we did that, essentially we trained the chimps here at Edinburgh um, that there were two areas that they could get food from. So there was one area over here that there were apples available and an area over here where there was bread. And the chimps here at Edinburgh don't really like apples but they love bread uh, so that was their low and high preference food and then um, we would then essentially play back a call um, from a group member given to either bread or apples to see then if that affected where an individual then went to search for the food and what we found is that when an individual hears a group member's calls to bread he goes and looks much harder in the bread location because that's what he expects to find and when he hears a group member's apple calls he goes to the apple location and looks for food there um, so it really showed us that the chimps themselves understand what these calls are really referring to and what they mean. So does that mean that chimpanzees have language? No, it doesn't mean that they have language. So um, humans are the only species with language, so language is um, just far more complicated than any other communication system that we know of in the living world. Um, so one of the key things that makes language special is that it's actually very highly structured. Um, and to date, we don't really have any good evidence that any other animal's calls are quite so highly structured as ours. Um, so we see elements um, of, com of communication in other animals, like the chimps, like monkeys, that share some of the features of language, um, but no other species has all of the elements that we have um, to make language. And we think that's probably what makes our communication special, um, is just that we have, it's just far more complicated um, than, say, the chimps' communication system. So some similarities, but also some important differences still. Katie, thank you very much. Thank you.